Um, but we have a very exciting conference coming up here within the next month at North Platte. You guys will be the generous host, and um, we're really excited to show you some of the material we put together and get through some of the sessions we're offering and uh, some of the events you can expect coming up here. If you have any questions at all, please email Madison Schlake. She will be answering any and all questions you have. If there's something we've missed or something that you want more information on, please send her that. Um, we can make sure we get it covered, especially at the end of our PowerPoint. We want to make sure no one has any um, anything that they're not sure about because we definitely want you guys all to be very familiar with the event and very excited as we are. So we're going to go ahead and get started now. The event is going to be taking place October 22nd through the 24th, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning. It will be held at the Ramada by Wyndham in North Platte at the Sand Hills Convention Center. If you haven't already, please go ahead and make your reservations. You can go and visit their website or just go ahead and give them a call. Here are some pictures of the Ramada. They have gone through an exciting renovation here. You can see that they have a definitely um, new, modern, sleek interior, which is really nice. The warm, um, you know, kind of pops of red and uh, a, re a really, really nice area. They're, they're going towards that new, modern, sleek mm -hmm. look where the, the floors are, are not carpeted anymore. So, mm -hmm. um, But they don't have the hotel completely remodeled. Um, most of the smaller out rooms, but the suites interior have not been remodeled. But... Um, for those of you who were at Travel Conference in 2016, it's the same uh, facility. The name has just changed. It was the Quality mm -hmm. Inn, and now it's the, the Ramadi. And so things haven't changed that much. There's a new, fresh look, though. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, I know, especially, it takes like a long time to do the renovations, but right. it is really neat for everyone who does get to stay in the newer rooms. So, uh, Lisa, would you like to tell us a little bit more about the welcoming reception? Sure. On um, Monday evening, as you guys travel into to North Platte, um, we wanted to do something special for you to welcome you to North Platte. So I reached out to the Golden Spike Tower. Um, the Golden Spike Tower is um, the attraction that overlooks Bailey Yards, which is the world's largest rail yard. And Kirsten and her board, Kirsten Parker, the director and her board, have been working with us to do um, a welcome reception for you. Um, she has done um, a tremendous job of putting together um, a lot of unique flavors that um, you can find in North Platte, food-wise, ice from ice cream to salsa to runzas and, and all kinds of fun things that you can taste there. Um, plus, one of our local breweries will be there and a winery and one of our whiskey distilleries also mm -hmm. will be there. So that'll be a fun time. And that is from 5 to 7. We are um, offering shuttles that will run from 445 from the Ramada out to the Golden Spike Tower and then um, pick you up afterwards after the reception too so yeah will be a fun time with beautiful views that's for sure another new thing that has popped in onto our radar um, one of our local sponsors at the visitors bureau in north platte is great western bank um, they are sponsoring this um, documentary called born to rain it is about three gentlemen who were inducted into the horse racing hall of fame um, they are from nebraska so this documentary is about them and their life and their their travels or their um, steps to um, gain that hall of fame um, so there's a lot of neat scenery about some smaller towns in nebraska and, and larger towns so um, they felt that was important to um, tag that onto our travel conference and it is a free to the public showing and it starts at seven o'clock on, mon on monday night and so we encourage everyone to who's interested to attend. Yeah, I did uh, have the opportunity to look up the um, trailer for this movie. It does look very interesting, especially if this is something um, that you're curious about. You can certainly go and visit their website. They'll have the trailer there. It's bornterrain.com. Um, and it's also really great that they have this as another option. Um, but we definitely encourage people to get out and to attend the welcome reception. I know Lisa and Kirsten uh, have put a lot of work into this. It's going to be a great time, especially if you're new to the conference looking to meet people or um, you're a frequent goer. It's a really good time to connect with people, especially ones that you don't get to necessarily see as often. Right. So um, we certainly encourage you to go and to have a lot of fun while you're there. So I'm going to go ahead and start diving into the sessions here. And we're going to go ahead and start with Tuesday. Um, Tuesday will be the first day of the conference. It'll start in the morning there. 
Um, bright and early, 8 a.m., registration will open. We'll have our booths out. Uh, our sponsors and exhibitors, they'll be getting set up, ready to go. Um, on Tuesday mornings, um, we're going to be having all of our association meetings. So we'll have the Nebraska Festival and Events meeting, Newcomer Orientation, the Nebraska Byways meeting, and the Nebraska Tourism Commissioner meeting. Um, these are all open to attendees. You know, if this is something that um, you've never attended before, that's okay. They certainly invite you to come to join to learn what their association is all about and kind of some of the things that they discuss all together. And especially to the Nebraska Tourism Commissioner meeting, if you've never been to one, um, it's open to everyone in the industry. We would like people to come to be involved, to know kind of what's going on some of the discussions we have and what the state's working on. I think it's a really great way to stay involved. Another really fun, exciting thing on um, Tuesday morning is that we're hosting Randy Dutau, and Randy will be leading a Sports Nebraska Roundtable. Um, and, and what I can do is read the descriptions of our sessions here so you can have a better idea of what will be included. Randy Dutau is a sports tourism industry consultant. He will be attending the Sports Nebraska meeting to provide guidance in growing the organization and sports tourism in Nebraska. There will be many interesting discussions that you won't want to miss. Um, Randy, he works for Sports Strategies down in Georgia, and he's consulted many sport um, tourism entities before. Um, after talking with Randy, I know he worked out in San Francisco for a while. He worked on developing the city's biking trails and maps, which is really cool, especially because that's such a large biking community out there. He does have an experienced background in CVBs. He was actually a director for several years before he got into sports specifically, so he can relate to a lot of us who will be attending the event. Um, I'll interject. It, you mm -hmm. know, you may think that you're not Omaha or Lincoln or a bigger community, so this speaker might not be, be someone that you would be interested in, but remember sports are anything competitive, mm -hmm. and we were just at a meeting last week out in Potter, Nebraska, and they are actually doing their own sporting events there in Little Potter, Nebraska, so you can do sports in your mm -hmm. community. It doesn't matter what size you are, so I encourage yeah. you if you have time to um, this doesn't correspond with something else you're attending to definitely check that out and see what it's all about no that's a great point it's Thank a you know an ever-growing um, part mm -hmm. of our tourism industry that's not tapped in ver to very well in Nebraska so I would say yes it's it's certainly becoming more popular and we do encourage people to go and and just to be more familiar with this it's it's an increasing segment that um, I think a lot of people are curious to learn more about and uh, another reason why to really like Randy, he is a Husker fan himself. Oh, wow. So, of course, um, <laughs> he's actually coming and then staying through the weekend going to a Husker fan, uh, uh, the game with his family. So, um, I'm sure he'll strike a lot of heart chords there, which is yeah. um, a great guy. He'll also be hosting another session, which I'll get into here in just a few minutes, but um, that will be a great opportunity to meet him, ask him any questions you may have, and just kind of get a feel for the sports tourism industry as a whole. So I'll go into our first keynote, David Rendall, and um, David will be um, presenting over the lunch hour here at the conference. Um, you can kind of go ahead and read his description there. I won't go ahead and read it for you, but David um, is a really interesting guy here. We actually found him um, when we weren't expecting to. He was in a podcast or a webinar with his colleague Stan Phelps and they were actually discussing Nebraska's campaign and both of them had been really interested in it. It caught their attention mm -hmm. and they just kept expanding on how it's so creative, how they really love it, how now all of a sudden these two men from South Carolina have an interest in Nebraska when they've never been here. They don't know anyone from here and now they want to come visit and they're really, really interested in this whole concept of tanking. That's, it's, yeah, it's, that's cool. it, yeah, it is really cool. And um, the fact that, you know, these two gentlemen now know about us and know what we have to offer is really exciting. So David and I were able to connect and um, he's a funny guy. He actually used to be a stand-up comedian. So he definitely has a great outgoing personality. He definitely fits this odd, kind of edgy, but really authentic approach to life where 
he thinks that embracing your flaws to stand out is really what's important and that's what people like to see especially here in Nebraska with the new campaign um, we we get along really well and I think that he's gonna start us off on the right foot of thinking differently you know what are some of our weaknesses that actually can be our strengths right. you know we kinda look at things that are different or maybe weird to others that we want to push away or, or hide but in all reality that's what makes it cool that's what makes us just special and, and special yeah. and so that's what he's gonna really talk about with us and how we can start um, incorporating some of those things to really stand out and and to better market ourselves to people so I think that's gonna definitely be a great session to start out with and to be a part of after the keynote we're gonna go into our first rounds of breakout sessions which I'll get into here our first one will be with um, Deb and Amber. They are with Turner, our partner agency here. And their session is making an impact, working with and measuring influencer success. So what does it mean to get a like on social post even mean and how does it translate to your business goals? Turner will explore the methods for working with influencers, measuring social media impact and how to interpret the data to show progress towards overall marketing KPIs for personal and professional brands. This panel will explore the best practices for working with influencers, including how to determine which influencers to work with, and developing an itinerary that meets their specific needs. We'll distinguish the difference between having a large following and a large engagement, leveraging Google Analytics and the value of UTM links, and other invaluable metrics that demonstrate social media success. Um, so that's kind of what their session will cover. Um, you know, I think we um, recently, or I know we recently had an influencer tour out in western Nebraska we that did. went really, really well. I know they were certainly surprised about um, Nebraska. They had no idea what it was like on that side of the state. Um, blown away by its beauty and all there was to do here. It's certainly a great way to catch people's attention and bring them in and certainly convey what you want them to. Um, it, this is a popular thing that may work really well in your community, so if you're interested in it, I would definitely say um, be sure to check out that session. Next, we have Vicki Soderberg. Um, her session is Using Quirky Events to Generate Revenue. So this session does piggyback really well off of David's. Um, and what I can do is go ahead and get into her session here. It says, events are the lifeblood of a community, but sometimes they are also the bane of existence for organizers. Even worse, many are totally forgettable and have the, had the same 2,000 attendees since the 20th century. What if your events were experiences that energize organizers, make volunteer appear, volunteering appealing, and demonstrate an impact that entices more sponsors? From a fire ant festival and a cow bingo to goat cook-offs and half K races, sometimes the strangest and quirkiest ideas bring festival lovers and their cash to your community's bank account. Join us to learn how to channel your inner weirdness and set yourself up for success. Um, a success that includes a solid economic return, repeat visitors, and even maybe a little more sanity into your life. So um, her session there definitely follows that theme of being that weird, quirky event stand out and really kind of set yourself apart from other communities in town. Um, and when I was on the phone with Vicki, one of the first things I told her, I was like, oh, you know, you're going to have to go to the Wayne Chicken Show. <laughs> and I told her all about it, Chicken Days. And, yes. and so, um, you know, different, different things that are unique to your area that, um, you know, that's a really big event, but if you have something else that maybe you're not thinking of that can definitely put you guys aside and stand out, I think that will be a great opportunity to kind of brainstorm some of those ideas and, and figure out how to make those a reality, if it's an idea you have, or maybe even if it's the same idea um, or event that you've had every year, what's a new way you can approach it? How do you make it different? to really attract new visitors, especially, you know, people coming in from different areas. How can you pull them and entice them to visit and to stay longer in your community? So Vicki will definitely be um, talking on some great sessions there as well. And in the last first round of breakouts, we'll hear from Greg. And Greg will be talking about resources for enhancing small business cybersecurity efforts. 
Greg is from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and he will be sharing the importance of online security and safety. The session will educate conference attendees on the cybersecurity resources that are available to assist companies. These resources can help enhance your cybersecurity resiliency, <laughs> cyber incident response, and recovery capabilities. Greg will also discuss the various cyber threats targeting companies and the need to have a cyber incident response plan. And um, the reason we're having this session is actually because this has been an interest from a lot of people in the industry. Unfortunately, in today's age, we do live in a society where this is a really large risk. And it isn't even just for large companies, it's individuals. Right. Um, which is, it's really too bad that's the case, but I think it's going to be great to hear from him. I know he's going to talk about a lot of available resources, you know, how you can have a plan in p place and to, um, to protect really sensitive information, especially when you're working um, with people all over the community. You want to make sure that they feel safe and that that information isn't just going to get out to anyone. Um, it certainly something that you need to consider or that everyone really should consider um, especially when so much is moving to technology and, and, and working through relationships that way too. Um, so a really really great session for everyone to keep in mind as well. So then we're gonna go ahead and move into our second round of breakouts still on Tuesday here. The next round we'll go ahead and introduce Sam and um, Samantha Crespo, she is from Miles Partnership, who we work with, and her session is going to be best practices for brainstorming, creating, and submitting field guide content for visitnebraska.com. What's a field guide to Nebraska, and how can you make the most of this free opportunity to share your unique destination with visitors? Samantha Crespo, Mile Partnership Content Director and Editor of Print and Digital Initiatives for Nebraska Tourism Commission, will share best practices for brainstorming, creating, and submitting field guide content for visitnebraska.com. As a bonus, the session will be packed with additional tips for creating print and digital content that's both inspiring and effective for winning visitors and increasing stays. And this will definitely be an interesting um, session, especially if you do a lot with the website. I would definitely encourage you to attend this. Um, another note I do want to go ahead and point out with Miles is that they are a sponsor of this year. And as a part of their booth, they're actually going to be set up with their computers to walk users through the website. I know since um, we've transitioned and gotten a new platform, um, Aaron Lenz, our public information officer, as well as our interns, Bobby and Emerson, they do get a lot of calls from people asking questions about their listings and other things about the website. So if you do have those questions, make sure you bring them to them and visit. It's a really great way to get more comfortable, more familiar with it, and also connect with them. So um, please, please, please go stop by their booth if you have any questions at all, or go ahead and attend this event for more content ideas. And it's important for attractions, hotels, yes. restaurants, events, everyone, everyone to mm -hmm. have the, all their information on the visitnebraska.com website. So that's, yeah. make sure it's right, make sure it's there. Yeah, a lot of people do use the websites to find ideas and right. to know what's in the communities they're visiting, listings, and also just as importantly, everything that's on the website is what gets printed in our travel guide. So the more comfortable you become with it, the more people who will be familiar with it and who will have a, an easier time finding your information, which is really, really important to those visitors. They want to make sure it's just easy to use, user-friendly. Definitely make sure you're on there. The next session I want to go ahead and mention is with one of our colleagues here, Jenna Barge. She's going to be talking about astrotourism. And this is definitely a hot new topic she has. Um, and I love her title, it's a play on words, Star Grazing Beefing Up Astro Tourism <laughs> Offerings in Nebraska. Really great. Um, and I'll go ahead and read her description here. It says, one third of the world's population and more than 80% of Americans cannot see the Milky Way from where they live. Thus, more and more people are searching for destinations where they can enjoy brilliantly starry nights amidst an light polluted dark sky. Recent studies have shown the market for astrotourism is growing and its potential economic impact goes well beyond tourist spending. With little guidance, Nebraska has a special 
and a great potential to become an astrotourism destination. However, the pace of growth and eventual magnitude of night sky tourism will depend on the willingness of local stakeholders excuse me, to embrace and promote their region's assets. Attend the presentation to learn how parks and local communities can begin to view their dark skies as a valuable resource to be protected and leveraged in terms of local economic growth and development. Um, so this is a really, really cool concept Jenna's been working on um, developing and kind of furthering within our state since she started working for the commission. I know this is a really big undertaking, but she's the best person to be leading it. Um, you know, our skies are something we almost kind of take for granted yeah. here. You know, when you grow up with something and you have it and it's so beautiful and you just see it, yeah. you just, that's, that's what you know, but it's so crazy to think that one third of the world doesn't doesn't know yeah. what a star looks like. No, it, it, yeah. or we'll ever see that. Right. And um, it's sad. It, it is really sad, you know. So this is something that Nebraska has that makes us um, certainly really competitive in this tourism industry and something that we should be protecting and um, really looking at to develop. I mean, this is a great free resource that we have opportunity to, to share with others. And, you know, how can we be promoting this and, and really encouraging people to see it before you know they may never have a chance so certainly a great session I know a lot of communities throughout the state have expressed an interest in this if you are please attend this event or just connect with Jenna I know she can get you a lot more information and um, get you just as excited about it as she is <laughs> okay the second um, till I guess this would be the last session of the second round of breakouts on the last day is the lodging tax panel and um, the lodging tax it's panel. A lot of tough looking characters. On <laughs> there <laughs> are. It's, it's a great group here. Um, <laughs> counties of all sizes can benefit from collecting lodging tax. To build on last year's session, panelists will share stories on how lodging tax dollars and the occupation tax have been used to grow tourism in their counties. Panel will include Karen Barrett from the Nebraska Department of Revenue, Mike Kesselring from Sioux County Tourism. Jim Steele, Dakota County Tourism, and Roger Jasnock from Buffalo County Tourism. Um, I also want to um, give a huge thank you to Karen Collars. She's been the one behind this session putting it together. She's the one who really knows what the industry has questions on in terms of lodging tax dollars. So she's found all these individuals who are really, really good models um, within their communities in terms of leading um, you know, lodging tax board and doing the most for their tourism um, and, and their communities. So this is a panel that's really going to be able to answer a lot of your hard questions and give you ideas of what you can be doing to better utilize that fund. Um, and Karen Barrett, she also works for the Department of Revenue. She's a really great resource for whatever questions you have as, as far as lodging tax goes. So if you want to connect with them, um, certainly make sure you kind of have an idea of who they are and, um, you know, every, every size of county is going to be represented. So don't feel like your county is too small right. that you can't go and learn from this, you know. <clears throat> It can be kind of intimidating when you see Roger and know, oh, well, if he's in Kearney, he's you know. He's a big teddy bear, though. Yeah, so <laughs> definitely go check it out and um, make sure you connect with them. There's going to be a lot of great information in there, a lot of questions um, that people will be able to have answered. I'm, trying to see yeah, I'm sure there'll be um, lodging tax questions. Um, September, um, Airbnb started collecting oh, yeah. lodging tax mm -hmm. for the state. That's That'll an important be big deal for us, so I'm sure. A big Karen part will, talk, of that. will touch base on that and how that's going mm -hmm. and hopefully by October she's seeing those, yeah. those people that are worked collecting lodging tax now are for us. Mm -hmm. Yes, so certainly um, make sure you stop in there and listen to that session as well. And now we're transitioning to yeah. the showcase. So North Platte, we decided we are a little quirky, just like mm -hmm. our slogan, the state slogan. So we decided that we wanted to um, brand this um, travel conference, um, Experience North Platte's brand of hospitality. So um, the best way um, we felt to do that was to showcase some of our Western Heritage hospitality and that um, definitely is um, um, experienced at Nebraska Land Days. Um, it, is, um, this, uh, it is one of the foremost um, festivals in the state and it um, so we wanted to do something special out there so David Fudge the director and his board are going to be cooking for us 
Um, we have a big tent that will be out there, just like Buffalo Bill did during the Wild West show. We'll have it out there. Um, we will have um, heaters in there, but we do encourage you to bring a jacket because mm -hmm. Mother Nature tends to do what she wants to on those days, but hopefully we have a nice day. But yes. So <laughs> David Fudge and his crew are cooking prime rib. Um, mm -hmm. The Visitors Bureau is part of this as well. Our board is going to be out there cooking s'mores and calf fries. <laughs> And if you have to ask what a calf fry is, you need to come and try one. Mm -hmm. And um, so we'll have a Dutch oven cooker out there, too, doing desserts, um, calf fries. Um, we'll also have some people doing some roping, uh, cattle roping, calf roping demonstrations, and brand branding demonstrations. So those of you who are city slickers who don't know what all of that is, you, we can experience that in North Platte and give you our brand of hospitality and we hope you guys have fun. We will again run shuttle buses from um, the Ramada out there. They will start at um, 545 and run continuously out there until 9. We hope. We also have a live band that will be there. So we're hoping to have all kinds of fun out there. Yeah, it won't be short of any activities, that's right. for sure. There's for sure. a lot going on. Yes, and, and lots um, of food. Mm -hmm. That's what I get most excited about. Yes, I think yes. that's what everyone really gets excited about. Yes. Um, and I've only heard really, really, really great things about the prime rib and especially all the steak out there. Yeah. So um, I know people will definitely be there for that. Um, and really just to experience it. I think it's going to be mm -hmm. a really, really fun time, a great opportunity, and um, come with your new friends right. or friends that you've had forever. Right. But certainly don't miss it. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and go on to Wednesday. This will be October 23rd, the full day of the conference. So starting day two, and actually this year we're trying something new. Um, and this was brought up to us by the planning committee, an, actu uh, an idea they actually had for us to kind of initiate and, and to take on, which um, was really, really neat. And this session is going to be from 7 to 8, so very early in the morning. But um, it'll kind of give you time to have a full breakfast and to relax before the full day of sessions. Um, this will be downstairs on the main level of the hotel. You can meet your district commissioner, get to know them over a cup of coffee and um, your breakfast there. If you don't know your district commissioner, that's fine. We'll introduce you. Um, so the state's broken down into 11 different districts. Depending on which county you're in, um, you'll have a, you know, whoever that commissioner is corresponding to your county. And we'll make sure that's printed up and easy to find. And if you do have questions or you would like someone from staff to introduce you, we can certainly do that as well. We'd be happy to. It's a really great way to network and get to know everybody and to definitely feel more comfortable in approaching them, you know. Um, be able to ask them questions or rely on them for help and resources. I think that'll be a really great way to kind of break the ice with that. And then shortly after the breakfast, we're going to go in and start our general sessions. We'll have Andy Pollock here to join us. He is the Nebraska Travel Association's lobbyist. So he will be giving a legislative update showing what's going on, um, what's, what's immediately impacting the tourism industry, what do we need to be aware about, and um, how, how is that going to be impacting or affecting all of us. Certainly very important information to know. Um, and if you have any questions, he'll be a really good one to talk to as well. Brand USA. So then we go on to our second keynote of the conference. Chris Thompson, he's the president and CEO of Brand USA. And I'm not going to go ahead and read his full description here, but I can tell you a little bit about it. So Chris is going to come in, and really he's going to give us an introduction to Brand USA. This is going to be a new thing for us and for our state, which is really exciting. And this is really the first step into international markets. So Chris, he's going to come in, he's going to talk about Brand USA, what it is, and why they exist. This is really, really big, especially when we're looking into group tours and we're becoming more competitive. You know, with Nebraska, people coming in, um, they're really curious about the Midwest, what there is to offer here, ranching, farming. Um, they don't get to see this necessarily right. from where they're from. And so if we're putting packages together, you know, how do we promote this? Um, but more importantly, who is coming here? 
how do we track them, and, and then how do we market to them. So um, really this is going to be our first big step into this new approach and figuring out how we're connecting to them. How do people perceive Nebraska internationally? Um, you know, what are some of the things that we need to be thinking about as we're thinking more globally now? So this will certainly be a great first introduction here. From there, we're going to go into our first round of breakouts for Wednesday. This will be Wednesday morning. And the first one we'll have is actually with Vicki Osman and Melanie Hinton. They're from the American Bus Association. Their session is Exceeding Motor Coach Expectations Together. Learn how the tourism industry comes together to attract businesses to Nebraska and your location. What are the tour operators and group leaders looking for? How do we distinguish Nebraska as the place for groups to come and what resources and tools are out there? Learn and share ideas on how we can all work together and engage in the forthcoming activities or opportunities to help destinations and individual businesses exceed motor coach travel and group travel expectations. Um, so this year, with the marketplace coming up here in January, we definitely have a strong group tour presence. This is going to be really important for anyone who's looking to get into group tour. Um, they're going to be talking about the group tour market, what the trends are, um, you know, especially looking at a national level, why this is important for Nebraska to be involved, kind of an overview on the whole industry. So. Um, Certainly, if you're planning to attend the marketplace or looking to learn more information, if you do want to attend or if it's right for you, definitely attend this session. Michael Collins, who is our group tour coordinator, he will be moderating this session and um, he'll be there to kind of guide some questions too. Certainly helping our state figure out what we need to be doing to prepare for marketplace and um, really how we can be pitching Nebraska as a group effort too. So certainly a great session to be a part of. And next we have Maria coming in. She's with Brand USA. And so kind of to piggyback off of Chris's session, she's going to get a little bit more specific. So opportunities with Brand USA. Each year Brand USA deploys marketing driven programs to increase inbound visitor travel to the USA and to drive international tourism to communities all across here. In this session, you will learn the resources available to you through Brand USA so your destination can begin to market internationally. Gain an understanding of the available co marketing opportunities and come learn how to drive engagement with international travelers, ultimately, leading to increased visitation and spending in your community. Um, so, Maria is definitely going to get a little bit more specific. She's going to talk about where and how you can start um, and kind of approaching this in a way that isn't too overwhelming. Um, I know when you start thinking about international marketing and international visitors, it can be very intimidating, but this is really just um, kind of your first approach to it. Um, she will be talking about how to kind of guide you through this process, how to start thinking about it, and really kind of what you need to be considering if you are moving forward in this direction. So certainly a great person to meet. There will be a lot of great information and um, something that we would encourage everyone to attend. Even though I say that about all the sessions, we do want you to go to all of them. There's so many great ones. But you've made it really hard for us. I know. <laughs> because there's three great ones and we have to pick one. I know. That's the hard part. It's not fair. And um, I know. Well, at least That's a good with thing, these, though. yes. Um, I want you to see their faces too because, you know, if you're really torn between a session and may not be able to attend, mm -hmm. you can at least connect with that person outside of there and just let them know. Ask them questions. You know, if you're kind of down to two and, you know, you're, you're really disappointed and might not be able to go meet with Maria, right. have questions for her. Just and go up and chat. You guys will collect their um, slideshows too and then yes. get them out mm -hmm. to all of us afterwards. Mm -hmm. You post yep. them. So. We'll have those available on the website as well. So um, we'd be happy to share that information, but I definitely do think it's important to have that connection. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yes. In person, because that's what builds your relationship. And certainly, um, 
you know, can kind of um, give you that relationship where if you do need to come back later and ask for help or advice, you'll at least be like, oh, remember we met at the and conference. And they remember and you. Go from there. Yeah, great way to build it. Okay, next we have Randy, and Randy's back up. Um, Randy's going to be leading a session here, Sports Tourism as Economic Development. So, sports tourism is an $11 billion annual industry. Communities large and small benefit from hosting sports tournaments and events in tourism segments that seem to defy the economy. In this session, Randy will give his insight to the process involved in developing a sports tourism program. This will include identifying suitable events for a community, providing service for right holders, and maximizing local sport sports groups, for finding event leads, getting sports specific knowledge, and garnering event volunteer support. So this will be a great session. Um, I know Randy too had mentioned this would be a great time to talk about facilities that many communities have that can serve as other um, functions and, and purposes for events. And so he's certainly gone in and met with people and gotten really creative on different fields they have. You know, great, what other events can you do with this? I know one community, they actually um, brought in a disc golf team because they had a huge field and they had never hosted disc golf before, but now they host a huge tournament there every year. Um, and that's kind of what they're known for. And no one had even really considered it because you know, it wasn't even an idea until they kind of met with him and I was like, okay, yeah, this would be possible, you know, we can make this work. So, you know, if sports tourism is something you're focused in or if you know your community has a lot of different facilities that might have um, more opportunities to expand, I would certainly connect with Randy. He can give you a lot of great ideas and feedback as far as that goes. Alrighty, and then we're going to go into another general session here. This will be with John, <laughs> and what he'll be talking about is Nebraska's strategic plan. Um, so this is something that's coming up within the next year, and really what he's going to talk about um, is what the strategic plan is. What does this mean? Um, what does this look like, and what is the direction we're all heading? I think John's work here has been phenomenal. He's really moving us forward, and we're, it's it's really great that we have a plan in place. You know, thinking about our goals, um, long term, how do we get there? How is this sustainable? And so those are some of the discussions we're going to be having with him, and um, allowing him to kind of guide us through. So you want to continue to grow Nebraska mm -hmm. tourism across the state. Right, right. Increase our visibility across the nation and world. And mm -hmm. That's yep. what the strategic plan will help us do, hopefully. Yep, and this will be a really great session, and um, John will be able to lead us and guide us through it. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and go into our last round of breakouts for Wednesday. And what this will be, our first one here, I'm going to mention... It'll be the panel of grant experts. So learn how to stand out and receive the grant funding you want. This will be with Rachel from the Nebraska Arts Council, Alex from Nebraska Game and Parks Commission, and Heather from our office. And if you want to ever find out if your community, event, or region is el eligible for funding, these three will walk you through the grant cycles and guidelines. Each panelist will bring their own area of expertise to the table, providing examples of how their grants can provide economic development and tourism efforts in your area. They will offer recommendations and insider tips for applicants. More importantly, they will provide advice on how you can make your application shine and ways on how you can stand out amongst the ever-growing application piles. Um, and I know we're in a really competitive environment right now where everyone's applying for grants. And um, it's certainly an important thing because, I mean, who doesn't love money? Yes, um, yeah. Everything, uh, money is what we need, especially when you have big ideas for your community, your event, or your region, um, and, and want to package it, put it together, and really communicate that to show the impact it's going to have. These three are going to be able to help you with that. So certainly, if you have ideas in place, um, connect with them, ask them, get their advice, know you know, what are some of the key words you need to mention, or um, what are some of the really catchy things that you've seen in the past 
what has stood out to you? How can we make that possible or really show you with what we have? So that'll be a great session and that's a popular one each year. Next we have trends, tribes, and the expectations that are changing travel. And this will be with um, Vladimir Jones and they will cover shifts in the desired destinations, booking, diverse target audiences, and how brands and tourism hospitality are ever evolving for today's travel landscape. So um, we have Anne and Sarah that are going to be coming in and really talking about trends. I know this is a, a broad topic, but they do have a researcher who does go more in depth. So you can connect with them and really, really learn about um, what's happening in today's world and how it may impact your marketing. So what they're going to look at Callie's and like what the traveler is looking for in tourism? Yep, I think okay. it'll be a little bit of everything. Um, they're going to be sending us more specific information too um, as it gets closer, but I know their research goes pretty in depth as far as, um, you know, social media right. and advertising. It's catching What's, the eyes of the traveler as mm -hmm. they're looking for marketing, social media. As it's always changing the technology and, so, and, and trends, but yeah, that's what that session will be and, and certainly a really good one to attend if you do a lot of marketing and social media. And um, last session we have for Wednesday will be a group tour panel and this will be consisting of Chevy Lee from South Dakota, Joey Spellerberg from Fremont, Vicki Osman and Melanie Hinton from American Bus Association. So these four will be coming together and their session title is The Secret to Attracting Group Tour Operators and Coming Them Back for More. Um, <clears throat> this will be a really important session for people who are interested in group travel or who are planning to go to Marketplace. And this is what I can tell you a little bit more about the session. If you've ever wondered how to tap into the group tour market but didn't know where to turn first, this session is perfect for you. The group tour market does not consist of your average le leisure travelers. This market wants to be treated like VIPs and enjoy activities that the general traveling public isn't able to experience. During this session, we'll have two group tour operators and a representative from the American Bus Association, a leader in the group travel and tour market on a panel to share with you the ins and outs and trade secrets to create a dynamic group itineraries, attract more group tour operators to your area or destination, and develop exciting group activities that will continue to attract repeat business. This is something um, that kind of goes off of the first session we offer. Um, so the first session is, is kind of understanding you know, this market as a whole, whereas this one's definitely more of the 101. Okay, let's get more of the right. details. Um, we brought in um, regional group tours to kind of give you their perspectives. You know, what are the travelers looking for and how do they pick destinations? Especially, you know, for communities, this is um, people who you can potentially be working with. Especially Joey, a gentleman right here in our own state, you know, how can you be attracting his business and his clients? And I know, um, it's kind of funny they call the group tours like rolling rolling banks because <laughs> they are they come and they just yep. spend a lot of money they in do. your community every, they say that every bus that comes to your community will drop it around thirteen thousand dollars when they stay at night every day mm -hmm. they'll drop that much money because that's 50 people in your community and mm -hmm. um you've got some great people chevy lee is is one of mm -hmm. the, the big people in the bus tour industry so yeah and they definitely are looking for unique things that the normal traveler doesn't want to so this is a good good opportunity for you to get mm -hmm. into the tour group tour and us hosting ABA in January. Omaha hosting yeah. it in January is awesome for this state so yeah certainly cool. and, it, and it's also a great opportunity to learn directly from yes from the group them. operators um, in a way that you know isn't as intimidating to go up and ask questions they can give you ideas on itineraries that they've seen that they get to hear all the feedback from their travelers. So they'll know firsthand what really works well, what stands out, and what lasts. I mean, if people go and have this great, great experience, you know, we, we want them to come back, what, what have those been? Um, so really asking them the questions and um, understanding how to begin selling your destination. So you got some time, um, but certainly make sure to attend those if you are going to Marketplace to get prepared. 
So, we're going to go into the next really exciting thing. Yeah. After the last um, session on Wednesday, we're going to have our Celebrate Nebraska reception. So, this is kind of um, an hour to kind of come together, really enjoy some of Nebraska's beer and wine. We'll have a tasting there at the hotel. Um, and really exciting as well, we're going to have hors d'oeuvres. Yes. So um, it'll be great, a really good time to mix and mingle right before we go into our awards banquet. So certainly if you're going to be there for that evening or if you're just coming in for the awards, make sure you get there a little early to have this reception. Get to know more about Nebraska's beer and wines and really enjoy North Platte's food. Right. And another... Um, Comment with that, I definitely want to thank Gabby from Nebraska Craft Brewers Association, or not, Nebraska Craft Brewers Guild, and Lori from the Nebraska Wine and Grape Growers Association. Those two have been a very big help in this and a very big part of the conference that we want to recognize and certainly, um, you know, show our love for at the conference itself, too. Okay. So um, the Sandhills Convention Center, their caterer is um, the canteen bar and and grill that is connected to the Ramada in and Chuck Lalon is kind of a nationally known Nebraska known chef he's um, his family has um, very deep roots in um, the in French actually his great his grandfather immigrated from France to North Platte and then he took over our um, our local country club and at the age of, of 18 mm -hmm. um, Chuck Lalon chef Lalon um, started working um, as a sous chef and then went over to Europe and started working with other chefs. Chefs, So he has a very unique flair. His food is always very um, colorful and vibrant and not ever plain. So we're uh, really excited to see what he's going to put on the plate for us yeah. on, on Wednesday night because he, he never disappoints us. So yeah. we're, we're really excited about that. That'll be a surprise. And the picture that's actually on the screen here, this is what's inspiring um, the meal for the banquet. So I thought you were going to tell. Oh, well, he, he hasn't told us yet. It's definitely it's still going to be a surprise. He said it's just yes, a thought. Yes, it's always beautiful so, um, and tastes just as good. I know, and the fact that I learned that he was a sous chef at 18, that's so impressive. Yeah. Honestly, I, I can barely cook yeah. for myself. That's that's amazing. Um, So, yeah, I'm really excited to see what he puts out. And it's going to be a several courses, I think, yes, too. Yes, definitely. I mean, he's, yeah, he's definitely going to show off there, which I'm, I'm very happy yep. for. <laughs> okay, so then after um, the banquet there, we're going to roll into the 2019 Tourism Awards. This year, we're giving out five different awards in the categories here. So we have our Friend of Tourism, Outstanding Event, so a population of um, 990... No, it'd be 9,999 people or fewer. Outstanding event of a population of 10,000 or above. The outstanding marketing campaign and the outstanding tourism attraction. So we definitely got a lot of applications or nominations in, I mean, and um, our judges did have a lot to consider. Um, but I'm excited to see, you know, what this year will hold for, for them. And I know it was probably a tough call with some of them. I'm sure. There's always lots mm -hmm. of cool campaigns that we get to see, oh, yeah. new events that, that are up and coming and rising. So that, that's awesome. We'll be yeah. excited to see who wins this it's, year. It's pretty competitive it's very competitive, here competitive. In, the, yes. in Nebraska. Yeah. Lots of very <laughs> cool things going on. And I wish we could give one to everybody. Yes. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see there. And uh, another really exciting thing, Jackie Harms will be the MC for the awards banquet, and she is the news director out in North Platte. Yeah, at our so, NBC station, NBC Nebraska. Yeah, so um, pretty well known and um, is just really great. She has a personality to carry it and make it fun and definitely very engaging for everyone who's attending. So um, I think that definitely adds a lot to the experience and making sure we have the right person kind of guiding it and making it, you know, much more lively. Yes. Okay. Um, last but not least, we get into Thursday morning. Um, I do want to mention that Nita will be having a meeting from 8 to 9.30. So if you were around, um, you know, for Wednesday night, definitely stay um, for the next morning. They will be having a session there at the hotel, and really it's a great opportunity to learn um, from the industry what's going on, what people are talking about. 
um, definitely different points that they'll be covering. Um, yeah. We have concerns with things um, mm -hmm. that might be happening in the legislature. I know Andy's uh -huh. going to talk about it, but maybe there's some things that we don't want to talk about in a big session. Right. We'll bring it up here that, you know, how we're going to approach that right. um, coming up in the next year and all things to grow tourism in Nebraska. So. Right. Definitely a good point there, too. Um, so please do attend that. You do not have to be a member to go. Everyone is welcome. In fact, they really encourage you to go and to meet and connect and really learn um, what Nina is all about. I do know, um, which I'll get into here in just a moment, that they are kind of going through a rebranding phase. So definitely changing its approach to membership and making sure that it's inclusive for everybody, um, which, which I'll touch on here in another minute. And then North Platte is doing a coffee and donut send off, right. which is awesome. Um, when we host a travel conference in 2016, our visitor center, um, which was is really close to the interstate, it's like a quarter of a mile from the interstate and right across the road from the Sand Hills Convention Center, the Ramada Inn, was under construction. And um, it's kind of a one of a kind place um, across the Nebraska and um, the nation because we're so close to the interstate. Um, we are, you know, a county um, funded visitor bureau, visitor center, so um, we wanted everybody to come up, come across, come over, see what we have to offer there, because um, we greet about over 8,000 people a year there, and the volunteers that we have that work there, we just want to share, and mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, it will spark an, spark an idea with somebody else so they can do something, something like that. So we're going to do coffee and donuts from 8 to 11, so before you leave town, stop by, grab a donut, fill up your coffee, say hi, say bye. No one's going to pass that up. No. Donuts and coffee, that's a yeah. necessity. Yes. <laughs> so certainly go by. Um, you won't want to miss that either. Um, and last but not least about the tour, uh, excuse me, NIDA. So um, here are some people that you'll definitely want to connect with about that meeting. Um, Tracy Jeffrey there on the left, she is the NIDA president. Um, she's actually also the North Fork CBB director. Um, but anything NIDA related, if you have questions, certainly connect with Tracy. She'll be able to help you answer those. Um, and then to her right there, that's Wendy Morrissey. She is now the new executive director of NIDA. So she was brought on earlier this year, and what Nita, or, um, excuse me, what Wendy does is she kind of looks at NIDA's membership. So really trying to figure out how they can invite and, and make it um, you know, more welcoming for people who are either um, in events or in hotels or restaurants. You know, we're all a part of the tourism industry together, mm -hmm. and certainly, you know, connecting with these individuals and making them feel as if they could be a part of this group and wanting to be a part of this group. So, um, Wendy will be there, and she'll be a great person to connect with, certainly get to know and ask questions, and, um, she works with Andy as well. So yeah, it, it's a great it's a great group of people. We certainly want um, Nita to be there, and, and it's a really great relationship. Right. So connecting with them. Another fun thing that Nita does during the travel conference. I'm not sure if you were going to talk about this, but is the silent auction. So definitely mm -hmm. bring some cash with you because yes. there's always some really cool things to bid on, and there's definitely wars that go on. <laughs> you know, I think I owe. Roger a jab or something. He always steals something away from oh, me yeah. that I need. Yes. Last so, minute. Last minute, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's always fun, and there's always really cool things to bid on, and all that money goes back to NIDA, mm -hmm. which they use to you know, help facilitate what their goals are, their mission is. Um, I know a foundation of that is the lobbyist that helps protect our industry in, mm -hmm. in this state. So. Yeah, really putting our, our, our best foot forward, and, and thank you for talking about that. Yep. I, I didn't put that specifically in the PowerPoint, but yes, NIDA will be having a, um, a silent auction that will begin on Tuesday morning at 9.30. That will go all day, and then it will go Wednesday morning until 2.15 on Wednesday afternoon. So certainly get your, get your bids in. It's going to be... Um, a bidding war, yes, which I'm excited definitely. to see, but we're going to have a lot of really, really neat prizes. Um, I know they've gotten several items donated, which is really cool. I do know that um, Jenner Marketing Manager has arranged to have a free advertisement on our website, which is like valued at $2,000. Cool. Yeah. So a community can go and bid on that, and certainly, you know, in the summer months when, when people are looking and making their vacations, 
right. you can have your name listed. So yeah. certainly... The items vary from things that a visitor bureau would want, marketing packages, mm -hmm. advertising packages, to jewelry that I want. True. So you can't bid on that. It I could be want. anything and everything. <laughs> so hotel rooms will be right. up for auction, yes. you know, if you want to have a giveaway. Passes to festivals. Or, mm -hmm. Lots of lots of fun things. Um, I actually went to the Iowa Tourism Conference and ended up bidding on uh, a hotel room for Council Bluffs. Oh. And, it was so fun, you know, things that you don't normally think that you'll want right away. Oh, and then you end up you paying, yes. yeah, paying yes. for it. And so definitely be prepared, and there's going to be great things um, to stay excited about. Lastly, it's not too late to register. We are accepting registrations until Friday, October 18th. Um, you can either fill out a form and mail it back to us, or you can fill out a form online. So there's two ways to register. Um, both work well, whatever you prefer, just make sure you get it in. If you go to our online website, this is just a screenshot as to what it'll look like. You can scroll down. If you have any questions, there's my contact information, my phone number, and email, as well as the dates to get that on your calendar. Um, I also want to go ahead and give a big thank you to our sponsors. We have a lot of great ones this year that are um, helping us make this event possible. So um, these, are, these are people who are really behind the scenes, you know, helping us bring this event to life. Certainly, certainly go visit them at their booths, get to know them, connect with them, see how you may be able to work with them yourselves. I know these people provide, you know, great resources for the industry and do really neat things. Lastly, um, but of course not least, um, I want to give Lisa Burke a huge thank you, not only just for driving here, but all the work you've done for this conference. Um, it's not easy to plan this no. large of an event. No, um, we have fun doing it. It is. So. It is really fun. You know, there are some moments where, you know, you can get a little stressed, but no, it's really fun. <laughs> Uh, so huge thank you to you and to Muriel and Amanda from yep. the uh, North Platte office. They do a lot behind the scenes as well. So if you see them at the event, be sure to thank them, um, as well as the entire North Platte CBP yep. team as a host. Right. You know, there's a lot that yep. goes into Everybody this. Everybody will have a job a that, part of that week, mm -hmm. and definitely Muriel and Amanda have stepped up and gone above and beyond. Yes, so, have so a great thank you. Staff. Yes, very great staff there. Uh, I also want to thank Cami and Lindsay from the Ramada, from the Sandhills Convention Center, and they're doing a lot from the hotel side. And um, the chef, Chuck there, he's going to put on a great meal. Right. So I'm excited for that. Big thank you to him. Uh, a big thank you to Kirsten Parker uh, at the Golden Spike. I know she's putting in um, a lot of energy towards this welcome right. event. Yes doing a lot of planning on her side, that's going to be awesome. Stay tuned for an invitation from her. Certainly, certainly go to that as well. And of course, our 2019 sponsors. Without them, this event would not be possible. And also to my staff, the Nebraska Tourism Commission, because they have given me a lot of support and they are all involved in some way as well. Um, either being a speaker or just working behind the scenes. Um, connecting with people. It certainly takes a whole lot of people to make this possible. So. Thank you to everyone. Uh, next year, too, the event will be held in Grand Island in 2020. So um, October 20th through the 22nd, mark your calendars. Um, it will be there. So stay on the lookout for that. They will have save the dates for you to take home. Last, um, we will be accepting bids for the tourism conference in 2023, 2024, it and 2025. Like a long, long ways away. It does. It sounds so far away. That's awesome um, that you guys are doing that. Yeah, it we helps us. We really want to get ahead of the game here, yes. help people who you know are really busy or you know had applied this year but weren't able to um, be awarded the bid. I know it was really difficult. You know, we, we want to have it everywhere, um, but there are certain considerations that go into it. But certainly I want to encourage everyone um, to apply. Those will be released in January. So um, from January to March, you'll have time to work on your application, ask any questions that you have. We will be conducting site visits in April and then announcing the next several years um, of hosts in May. So um, it seems like it's far off, but it really flies by. Yeah, it um, does. So if this is something you're considering, uh, definitely get it marked on your calendars. And if you have questions, connect with me at the conference. I'd be happy to talk to you about it and get you more specific information as well. 
Again, if you have any questions about today's session, you can email madison at madison.schlake at nebraska.gov. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start and see if there are any questions so far. Yeah, we have a few. Okay. Um, one of the first questions is, if my community um, will be receiving an award at the night of the banquet, will we be notified in advance? So, all the award winners are going to be surprised. No, you don't know. Yes, we're not going to reveal any of the winners. Um, but, of course, I will make sure that if I... If I um, I know who's going to be awarded. I will make sure they're in attendance. So I'll be pretty sneaky about it, but I will not let you know that you're That's receiving why an award. We want everybody to go. Yes. You have to go. If you, yes. If you've submitted an application, you definitely need to go. Yes. Because that's part of it. You just support one another yeah, yes. and, and be excited and be surprised. It's all a part of the experience there. Um, another one we have is what kind of networking events will be held at the conference? So I would definitely say the Monday night event. Mon the Monday night social, the yep. Tuesday night event at the Wild West Arena, definitely a social. Mm -hmm. Thursday morning, um, right. coffee and donuts. And then um, each day we're going to have 30-minute networking breaks. I know it's a lot of information coming at you too, so it's good to step away for a minute to refresh, get a drink, talk to your friends, stretch your legs. That will be a great time to connect with your peers and our vendors. So. Um, there will be plenty of opportunities. There's lots for that. and lots yeah. of opportunities for networking. Mm -hmm. All right, and then two more. Um, what do I do if I plan to attend the conference and have special dietary needs? Let me know in advance. Um, on our registration form, there is a line there where you can mark if you have specific dietary needs. Of course, we want to be um, very accommodating to that, especially too with food allergies. We want to make sure so everyone stays safe and doesn't go hungry, you know, let us know in advance and we can work it out with the chef to have a special meal set aside for you. Okay, and then the last question is, is it too late to be a sponsor for this year's conference? No, it is not. Uh, we're still expecting, expect, oh my goodness, I cannot <laughs> speak. We're still accepting sponsorships, so if this is something you're interested, please feel free to email me. I can get you the appropriate information for that and let you know how we can move forward. Um, you know, if this is something still that you're thinking about, please let me know soon. We are getting ready to go ahead and print our materials, so um, I would say make that decision as quickly as possible. But yet, we are very accommodating, so if you decide to show up the day of, we can still set you up a table and a great way to meet um, potential clients. Definitely. So, thank you all for attending today. Feel free, um, actually, please do take our survey that's at the link at the bottom of the screen here, and let us know if you have any other questions. Thank you. See you in North Flat. See you in North Flat.